All right, so today we're going to start more on the, uh, I guess our initial look at the end of World War II for MacArthur. So this is between the years 1944 to 45. Um, which big highlights are going to be like the Battle of Lady Gulf and then um, I believe the actual signing of the uh, well, we'll save off on that one but anyways so basically kind of starting off with the Battle of Lady Gulf is more of it was described as to quote uh, the greatest naval battle in history for the Japanese were now desperate if they were unable to prevent MacArthur from retaking the Philippine archipelago, they knew they would no longer have access to the Indies oil, the lifeblood of their generals and admirals. Because remember, that was a big play or a big factor in the very beginning of the Japanese, um, I guess, involvement in the whole reason they were like really taking over the Southwest Pacific was to really get at the oil and the um, all of the other goods and just the energy they needed to actually fight the war and just survive. And it definitely didn't help that um, America did sanctions on them beforehand at the very beginning of the war too. So I, I remember, I don't remember if this book says it explicitly, but I know some people argue that was uh, kind of the biggest reason why the Japanese really attacked Pearl Harbor was that you know the sanctions and stuff they needed the oil and things to actually you know continue so especially being a small island well small being an, an island period in the pacific you know you have to naturally import a lot of your stuff um just because land area is a problem so there's that um anyway to continue so uh, the Japanese basically believed they could do this. So Imperial Japan Japanese headquarters in Tokyo had drawn up a do or, do, do or die plan encoded Shogo or Operation Victory. Everything would be thrown into a, an attempt to prevent the general from establishing a foothold in the islands. After the war, Admiral uh, Somu Toyota explained why. To quote him, uh, if the worst should happen, there was a chance that we would lose the entire fleet, but I felt the chance had to be taken. Should we lose in the Philippine operations, even though the fleet should be left, the shipping lane to the south would be completely cut off so that the fleet, if it should come back to Japanese waters, could not obtain its fuel supply. If it should remain in the southern waters, it could not receive supplies of ammunitions and arms. There would be no sense in saving the fleet at the expense of the loss of the Philippines. Basically, like, they had to keep that kind of two-way lane open um, to the south because it was either the oil and the actual energy they needed to run the fleet was in the south, but the munitions and everything were in the north. And so they need, you need both for warships, obviously. Um, uh, side note on this, so there is a movie, disclaimer, I haven't watched it, I've just seen it, so I know some people like movies of certain, like, big things, it helps them remember in a way, I know that's one of the, one of the big reasons why, like, I can remember Dunkirk and stuff was because I watched the movie, sometimes just, like, giving you the visual really helps, even though, like, historical accuracy may be, uh, we'll say questionable at times, um, for various movies whatever i'm not specifically picking out that one i'm just throwing out an example but there's a movie made in 1963 called the raiders of lady gulf about this time excuse me so there's that so basically and part of the reason why this was such a big thing uh, as in like the Battle of Lady Gulf was Lady at the moment was under the awesome guns of two U.S. fleets Halsey's 3rd and Tom Kincaid's 7th Kincaid was a subordinate of MacArthur but Halsey whose force was faster and far more powerful was answerable only to Nimitz and Honolulu and this split command worried our MacArthur and this is something we've talked about in previous videos too of how there was the uh, the split between MacArthur in the Southwest Pacific, and then Admiral Nimitz and the Navy on the other side. And we talked a bit in a previous video about like basically how this was a big factor for like how they actually um, operated. So like one of the things, and this it could be 
probably is biased um, just from looking at because uh, this is only one source or whatever but like to say like the uh, basically the death toll on the Nimit side of things um, in those battles was much higher with the Marines than it was with the soldiers and stuff for uh, MacArthur um, at the time granted that's not all looking at the whole picture right in front of me um, that's also taken I guess the intent of that statement's taken from the book itself, right? Um, there's that. Basically, you know, that's why we see things are... Where I'm going with that, if... I could get my train of thought correctly, apparently. But anyways, so... Basically, we tend to kind of... I don't want to say look up to, basically immoral, not immoralize, immortalize um, uh, the battles and such that had like an astronomic death toll, right? So it's kind of like almost making it worth it, basically kind of like, you know, putting those high cost um, battles on a pedestal in a way, like Okinawa and Guadalcanal and so on, which were on the Navy's and Marine side. Um, in this case, as opposed to the other ones like Hollandia and so on that MacArthur did to where the death toll was significantly less. Now, is that, um, is that a direct representation of the commands themselves or is that, you know, just the situations of what they were facing on those islands, right? And those are kind of questions that we're going to dive further into in future videos if you guys want me to. Um, really kind of look into and pick apart specifics like I've been talking about uh, these first few videos of this playlist for MacArthur are not meant to be like really down and dirty like that so we'll leave that there for a bit of a side right um, another statement too um, still about Lady Golf so to continue on, the designation D-Day having been preempted by Eisenhower in Normandy four months earlier, that Friday was called A-Day. Um, MacArthur watched the Higgins boats row, race across the waters toward red and white beaches uh, just below uh, Taclaban. Other small craft bearing GIs were landing at Velvet and Yellow beaches near Dulag and scan the skies for hostile aircraft. There were many more than he had expected. Halsey had been misinformed. This is the big part. The enemy was nowhere near as weak as the Admiral had thought. Imperial General Headquarters had been holding back, waiting until MacArthur committed himself. Even more alarming, Kenny would discover before the day was out that because the island's unstable soil, airfields were there were unusable during the rainy season which had just begun. So basically, this is part of the reason why there, the Battle of Lady Golf seemed to be such a big, um, I guess, turning point, big battle in at this time in this theater because of, you know, the Japanese were holding back and basically kind of like a last stand almost, it seems, and then really waiting for MacArthur to have to put everything he had into it. Um, and another reason, um, this is a little bit more we'll say personal um, on this part is, you know, this was, did I pass it? Let me see if I got an actual quote for it. Yeah, it was right here. But pretty much after uh, MacArthur made landfall there, um, he found out that the people he was against, the Japanese um, on the island were the 16th division, division, um, which were basically the ones that were, uh, I don't wanna say in charge, but to blame in a way for Bataan, the Bataan Death March. But there's also a side note that um, that's pretty much what he ex explained it to be. But you know, um, a side note from the author uh, is the 16th um, had in fact been on Bataan, but it is, thought improbable that its men were responsible for the death march. Basically, they were on the peninsula, but not that part. Um, but again, that's just a side note from the author. Um, haven't looked much into it before that, but that could be another reason why, you know, um, this was such a big deal at this point in the theater. 
So there's that. Um, to continue, so to go a little bit on what I was saying earlier through more quotes, I guess. So MacArthur had achieved strategic surprise. The troops of Ciro Mancano's 16th Division were being slowly pushed back to Ladies Highway 2 toward an eminence which American GIs had christened Breakneck Ridge. Um, unlike commanders of Marines and Australians, the two other infantry forces in the Pacific, the general preferred to pause at enemy strong points, waiting until his art art wow, artillery um, had leveled the enemy's defenses. And this is kind of the author making, uh, alluding to what he was talking about earlier with the casualty list versus uh, for Nimitz versus MacArthur. Um, there's that. So to say again, uh, MacArthur shook a finger in the, oh, this is something else, sorry. Anyways, um, basically on this, uh, the press and, so, and some of the Philippine um, heads of states, so in this case, uh, Romulo. Um, so to, when American newspapers fretted over this, basically why he was halting at those enemy strong points and letting the artillery come up and, you know, level them out. Um, uh, basically, the American press was asking, you know, like, why? Just, like, why would you stop at these strong points and let them go on or whatever? Um, basically, I guess trying to see, like, saying that he would, like, increase the death toll that way. But MacArthur uh, shook his finger at him and said tell them that if tell them that if I like I can finish lady in two weeks but I won't I have too great a responsibility to the mothers and wives in America to do that to their men I will not take by sacrifice what I can achieve by strategy um, again kind of another quote to back up that uh, casualty versus casualty lists or death toll versus uh, MacArthur and Nimitz there's that um, at the end of the day, basically, he called Lady a uh, springboard, um, but he was just discovering it would be a very soggy one. So in 40 days, 34 inches of rain fell, turning the island into one vast bog. Basically, this made runway grading impossible, and even though uh, GIs had captured five airfields, uh, Kenny couldn't use any of them because they were basically just mud flats. So he pretty much made them useless. And that's more or less the uh, this part of the war. This one's starting to get kind of longer in terms of the length. But another thing to note, I guess the last thing we'll note, is this book does have a lot of maps in here, really like show you can see everything. Because again, you know, the Southwest Pacific, especially the Philippines, is, is an archipelago of many islands we'll say i don't remember exactly how many or i think even sometimes people don't even like they're finding new ones to this day which i could be completely wrong on um haven't looked into that specifically but regardless there's plenty of maps showing everything um and so on there's even one uh, that has like the philippines and just like pretty much the entire Southwest Pacific and then they overlaid a to scale size of the United States on it. So you could kind of just see the, uh, the scale of the theater in general, which we have talked about in the previous video, in a previous video as well. But I guess for some housekeeping things, uh, cause you've been talking about the book and so on. Um, so the book we're going through is called American Caesar, and this is by William Manchester, one of his biographers. Here's the cover. Um, this isn't the only source that I plan on going through for MacArthur. It's just the first one. Um, so there's that. It's just going to be the first one that I go through to really kind of get a gist of everything. But... Yeah, with that being said, if there are specific things we talked about in this video that you guys want me to go more in depth on or um, any other really like comments or concerns, that's what the comment section is for. There's that. If you're interested in more of these types of videos where I'm really kind of or like just building playlists on like specific people because um, I've been 
kind of doing that a little bit or plan on doing that a little bit. Um, make sure to subscribe and let me know so that like, I know these are the types of things you guys are wanting. Uh, but other than that, um, I'll leave this one here. And next we're gonna talk about, you know, the end of World War II in the Pacific and all the signing and the drama that happens on the USS Missouri and so on. So anyways, I'll leave this one here and hope to see you guys on the next one.